the Diagnostic Centre in Delft in the Netherlands. Around 1,600 samples are processed here every day for hematological routine analysis. On the 25th of April 2011, the sample from a patient of the eye clinic is sent to the hematology analysis line. It's hoped that the patient's blood analysis will reveal the reason for his frequent headaches. Quite unexpectedly, the case manager software of the hematology system reports a conspicuous parameter constellation indicating a possible ET, an essential thrombocytemia. This is a rather rare hematological disease carrying the risk of embolism or infarction. Based on the assumption of extreme thrombocytosis, the immature platelet fraction is evaluated to rule out pseudothrombocytosis. If the hematocrit levels are not increased and the RET HE and Delta HE parameters do not indicate iron deficiency, it's very likely that the patient has ET. John Lockoff, the medical technical assistant, decides to enlist the help of Dr. Tax, the laboratory physician. Together they review all patient information in the laboratory information system. Obviously, it's a 45-year-old man, registered in the hospital system for other complaints, but had no hematological medical history. Dr. Tax can see that the platelet values had been steadily increasing since 2003, and the patient could possibly be suffering from isolated thrombocytosis. We looked uh, at uh, other possible causes for the thrombocytosis, uh, like infection or maybe some other malignancy or... Uh, iron deficiency, all those sort of things, but we could not really find an explanation for the thrombocytosis in uh, the patient history. Uh, I called the general practitioner uh, to ask him if he had any uh, clue where the thrombocytosis uh, came from. Um, we could exclude most of the uh, causes for a secondary thrombocytosis, however we could not confirm an ET yet. Dr. Tex then decides to contact the hematologist Dr. Ralph Brower to ask for his opinion about a possible ET. Essential uh, thrombocytemia is, uh, is part of the so-called myeloproliferative disorders. And these disorders have in common that there is an increased production of uh, blood cells. And in the case of essential uh, uh, thrombocytemia, this is the, uh, mainly the platelets. And danger of this kind of diseases is that um, there's an increased chance of thromboembolism and that might be a myocardial infarction or, um, or a cerebral uh, injury. Dr. Brower immediately decides to arrange for the patient to come for an appointment to the hematology department to fortify the suspect diagnosis by means of additional laboratory tests. We arranged for this patient that on his first visit to our hematology department all relevant lab tests were performed, including of course the YAC2 uh, DNA mutation analysis, which in 50 to 60 percent of all ET cases is positive. Um, so if it's positive and you have some other criteria, some exclusion criteria, which are uh, negative, uh, the possibility of an ET is, is very high. The positive JAK2 test confirms the suspect diagnosis of ET. At 45 years of age and no history of thromboembolic complications, the patient was classified low risk, so treatment with acetyl salicylic acid was considered sufficient. He's pretty safe right now and he's tolerating the, the, the therapy well. And of course we will check if his platelets will increase, so it's important to uh, uh, to check him every uh, half year or year. Early diagnosis is, uh, is of utmost uh, importance. The early warning from the hematology system uncovered essential thrombocytemia, thereby significantly reducing the risk of stroke for the patient.